Hi there. I'm Heather Dran at Sarah's Hilliard, and I'm here joining you today live with today's episode all about the relationship style of the ESFJ, or as we call it in the striving styles, the socializer. Uh, as you may have picked up by now, we are hosting Relationship Empowerment Month all throughout February, bringing you insights and tips for each of the 16 personality styles or personality types and the eight striving styles, right? And you are going to see by tuning into each and every one of these episodes that no two types are exactly like when it comes to how it is that they do relationships. But when we understand what drives the behavior of each of these different styles of each of these 16 personality types, how it is they bond, how they romance, you know, we're just more likely to have successful relationships with them, be it personally or professionally, right? So, and you're going to get the benefit by watching all 16 of these episodes on how you personally behave when it comes to your turn to do relationships. So let's get into talking all about the ESFJ. Again, we refer to them as the socializers. They are warm hearted social types and they place great importance on their relationships with other people. This is their priority that need to be connected. They tend to be popular, gracious, eager to please and actively seek approval from their partner. They're warmed by approval, right? That means a lot to them and sensitive to any indifferences in a relationship. They take great pleasure and personal satisfaction from generating good feelings in other people and in themselves, right? So these are, you know, these are people, people here, right? They tend to seek the positive in people and their admiration makes their partner always feel really good about themselves. And because they must have harmony in their relationships, ESFJs develop the ability to see merit in other people's opinions even when these opinions conflict with their own, right? Very important thing that they do. They're prone to focus so much though on other people's viewpoints that they can easily lose sight of the value of their own. So let's get into talking a little bit more about some of the things you really should know and understand about an ESFJ, whether you are one or you're in a relationship with one. ESFJs are wired, they're just wired to take care of the physical needs of their partner as though this is the most important contribution that one could make in a relationship, right? So attending to what goes on in that physical space. They're helpful, they're supportive, they're caring individuals that may even believe that their partner really loves them because of all of those helpful, special qualities. And they will do everything for their partner if their partner will allow it. They'll take over even simple things that their partner is perfectly capable of doing. They may insist on cooking and cleaning up because they feel a sense of their own ability to take care of things when they are doing this. I have a, a sister who's an ESFJ and I always find this when, you know, even when I invite her over to my house to, to come see me, she comes armed with food and, and wine and, and, and wants to do all the cleaning and the cooking while she is even there. Again, they're just so wired to step into that place. Now, in a primary relationship, the partner can really end up becoming dependent on the ESFJ. And this can turn problematic when the partner stops doing anything at all. We see this happen because the ESFJs are so helpful that their partner ends up saying, well, I don't need to do anything. I'll just sit back and, and let this get taken care of for me. What happens then is that the ESFJ starts to complain right? They complain about how they have to do everything, how their back, head, and their neck hurt because they hauled in all the groceries from the car to the house. You know, that martyring tone that starts to come in. And should their partner offer to take over doing some of the work, in a, creating a little bit of confusion here, the ESFJ will refuse melodramatically insisting, don't worry about me, I'll just take care of everything all myself. It's not that the ESFJ wants to suffer. It's that to accept help would mean giving up their power in the relationship. Because the first function of the ESFJ or the socializer style is the extroverted feeling function, right? That's what they're working out of. Despite their loving and caring ways, they are extremely judgmental and they don't have much of a filter when it comes to refining their opinions. They will correct their partner's behavior 
publicly, tell them what to wear, and they can be quite tyrannical actually when it comes to appearances. Should their partner not behave appropriately, ESFJs can become cold and punishing. And even moving to kind of set up a separate life sometimes, right? It's as if a wall comes down inside of them and it leaves their partner completely out in the cold, not knowing what it is that they have done. And whatever transgression their partner has made, and, and they just are seen motivated by a desire to hurt um, or embarrass or get back at the ESFJ for something, the ESFJ will make them pay for those transgressions, right? So you see that extroverted feeling function, the judgment that comes in, the you know, right or wrong, good or bad, and then the punishment that comes from making that transgression. No one, not what no one, none of the other 16 types plays the role of the long suffering martyr in a relationship the way an ESFJ can. It's like, how could you have acted that way after everything I've done for you? Uh, it's a well rehearsed line in their favorite melodrama called I give so much better than I get. Because the ESFJ now is devoted to their partner, they make excellent partners. They really do. They make excellent partners and their social skills allow them to be at ease in most situations. They prefer to spend time with their partner involved in socializing, entertaining, or being entertained, right? And they just want them to be along with them. They want to stay connected in that way. That's very important. And that allows them to enjoy time together while easily interacting with other people. Now, there are so many more wonderful things that I could tell you about the ESFJ. And if you want to know more, hop on over to Now Fix Your Relationship, um, where you can find out all of the resources that we have uh, for each of the different 16 personality styles. And again, we're going to be able to find out more details and look in more in depth if this is your relationship style or the relationship style of someone that you're in a relationship with. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about how the ESFJ bonds. This is important to understand. And, and it really is about them fusing, right? They try to become one with their partner by putting their partner's needs actually ahead of their own. And they take care of their partner, right? That becomes their focus. And while it seems like they're putting the other person first, they're actually meeting their own need to be connected. This is what's driving it, right? They have a need to be connected. And so if I fuse with you, and I focus all my energy on taking care of you, and then we're going to have that um, connection. And as a dominant partner in the relationship, they make sure their partner is dependent on them for everything from doing their laundry to making lunches. Okay? And they become indispensable to their partner, anticipating and taking care of their needs before they even know they have them. And in the pursuit of this, they ignore their own needs and they will give their all into making sure that their partner is happy. Now, to be psychologically secure, the ESFJs need a constant feeling of connection to their partner, right? You've got to hold that connection. And they create it by thinking about and doing things for their partner. They need to talk and to interact with them and to know what's going on in their lives. They don't like it when they're in a relationship with a partner who keeps information from them or doesn't share their problems. ESFJs need to be able to help right? That's their wiring. And when their partner doesn't allow them to, they take it very, very personally. And so ESFJs can easily misinterpret withdrawing or withholding behavior of their partner as a personal rejection of them, right? If you loved me, you tell me what's going on, right? Is something that they might say to try and get their partner to open up. And not being able to help their partner or know what's going on with them breaks that bond and creates anxiety for them in that relationship. The ESFJ takes pleasure in getting to know what their partner likes. Um, so they can do those things that will make their partner feel special. And they'll often think of those little touches, right? Those unique little things that their partner might overlook. And they tend to be sentimental rather than overtly affectionate. And they'll go to great lengths to do things for their partner just to show they care. And while they'll expect their partner to do the same for them and to express appreciation, they will never overtly communicate this desire. 
Although ESFJs don't really need to spend significant amounts of time exclusively with their mates, they do take pleasure in getting to know their partner's likes and dislikes and making them feel special. Again, you see that in that, like wanting to make them feel special by remembering their favorite dessert or their bottle of wine, right? That really treating them because they know their partner. There is no effort too great in this regard as they want to show their partners just how much they care. ESFJs feel most powerful when people confide their vulnerabilities to them. Again, that need to be helped, right? At their best, they feel needed and therefore they feel connected when somebody else wants their help. And they are truly, truly concerned for the welfare and the well-being of the people that they are connected to. At their worst, however, um, you know, they gather personal information as power. So think about, you know, that sort of moving into a place of gossiping, or that power information that they can use as leverage with their partner, you know, again, often through gossip, or they help their partner in order to create obligation that will keep people connected to them, right? So that holding and pulling people in that dependency, and then manipulate or use guilt to get what they want when their partner is not acting the way they want them to. They often know what is going on with their partner, although they may share little about what is going on with them personally. So that is what brings us to the first relationship challenge of the ESFJ, something that ESFJs and their partners may struggle with. So our first challenge is the fact that they foster dependence. They don't just help. They take you over, right? If you ask to help them, they say no, right? You're not allowed to help. They're going to do everything for everyone. If you get up to get something for yourself, they'll jump up and do it for you, right? Because my example I gave earlier about my sister, you know, coming to my house where I'm hosting and, and bringing like lots of food and wine. And so really there's, there, I didn't need to do anything because again, wanting to be so helpful. The, they experience guilt should they be sick and actually need something from you. The ESFJ is often relentless around having to take care of or worry about something. They need to feel needed to feel validated, right? That, that needing, uh, that being needed is the validation that they're looking for and that increases their self-esteem. At the core of it, what is there is the belief that they have to give to get. So that means you, their partner, has to be dependent on them so that they can be your caretaker and meet their need to be connected. So this, again, is all self-protective behavior, right? But at the core, they're trying to get that need to be connected met, and that's very important. You don't just want to advise, they, no, sorry, they, they just don't want to advise and be helpful. They want you to do what they say so that, again, they can feel validated, right? And ESFJs help in the way that they define help. So it's not necessarily the help that you want or need. And they'll often do things contrary to what their partner has asked for. It's as though what they hear in their head is, I know what he said, but I know better than what, what he needs. He, you know, And so I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to decide what is required. They, Their partner may ask for hamburgers for dinner in the morning and come home to a chicken stir fry. Disappointed, they'll say something like, I asked for hamburgers for dinner, not chicken. Why did you change the menu? The response of the ESFJ, well, I was only looking at for your health. You know how much weight you'll put on if you keep eating burgers. I thought you'd be pleased. It's so much better for you. I can't do anything right, can I? And so they don't see that they're being controlling or dismissive of what it is that their partner has actually asked for. So how do you navigate this with the ESFJ? Knowing that they have a tendency to treat you like a child doesn't mean you conform and let them do it. Be insistent upon taking care of your own health without using anger or frustration with them. They do truly, truly want to take care of you and they can cross your boundaries and make decisions for you without asking you. So a response like, while I appreciate your concern for my health and my weight, please discuss changes to dinner menu with me before you decide in the way you have today. And I too will show you the same courtesy, right? So we're in this together. We're looking at interdependence, right? And a partnership as opposed to fostering dependency that which is what the ESFJ or the socializer will do. Partners of the ESFJ really, they have to recognize when they are in this place of dependency and when you have stopped acting like an adult. 
Okay. For the ESFJ to be selfless, you become selfish, right? It's that yin and the yang that goes with every relationship. As, you know, we've got the dominant and we've got the submissive, right? And so when they're moving you into that place of dependency, you end up to going into a place of not acting like an adult. And again, you become selfish, you take and you don't give back. And not recognizing that you're being selfish and not and rec not recognizing that you're taking advantage of the ESFJ's needs to be helpful, to be connected, that actually has to get addressed in the relationship. Catch yourself the next time you say, I think I'll have my buddies over for game night on Monday. Make sure you buy enough booze and snacks for the party. And if your ESFJ partner has really become more like a servant for you, it's time to wake up to your own enabling behavior, right? Because this goes hand in hand. The second challenge with the ESFJ in relationships is they avoid intimacy for social recognition. And the reason why they do that is they're afraid of opening up and revealing their innermost thoughts and feelings, which can really make them feel vulnerable and exposed, something they don't want. And they mistake their ability to listen and to relate to their partner as being intimacy. They don't actually share much about themselves, their feelings or their own problems. Instead, they'll share stories and information about their partner. So a partner may have a sense that they know the ESFJ really well, but they are great at concealing their inner world behind that helpful role that they play. They may also struggle with expressing their own emotions and instead focus on expressing opinions and judgments, right? That's that good, bad, right, wrong thing. And this can make it really difficult for them to fully engage in an intimate relationship as they may feel they're unable to fully open up and be themselves. Now, ESFJs can really appear selfless in their relationships with their partners as they tend to be so focused, as I've talked about earlier, on uh, attending to the needs of their partner. And they rarely look inside of themselves at what, you know, what are my emotional needs and what desires do I have? Um, and again, there's, they see caring as really just about looking after the partner, not themselves, as that would be considered selfish. Okay? So how do you navigate this with the ESFJ? Well, invite them to share and don't take no for an answer. ESFJs are going to need to be led into this arena through empathy and understanding. So let them know that you appreciate all that you do, all that they do for you, sorry, and you simply want to return the favor. They might not be comfortable, but with curiosity and some open-ended questions that encourage them to share their thoughts and feelings, they will start getting used to talking about themselves. The path to intimacy with them is building tolerance to focusing on themselves without feeling guilty, right? That wiring, I'm here to help others. And so now we want the focus to shift onto them to balance that out in the relationship. The third challenge, and if you are in a relationship with an ESFJ, uh, be it your primary relationship or an, another family member, is their orientation towards punishing and disconnecting. So ESFJs need approval from their partner to feel connected. And it's not always apparent to their partner that this is what they need or that they need anything because they're always so busy doing everything for everyone else, right? They can easily feel rejected or devalued by their partner when the partner fails to notice all of the little things that they do for them to make their life work smoothly. When they don't feel like their partner appreciates them or shows adequate recognition for what they've done, they really adopt sort of a heaviness about them, becoming long suffering. Uh, you know, appreciation, by the way, is shown to them by their partner following their advice or wearing the shirt they bought for them while out shopping. And they insist they aren't looking for appreciation, but when they don't get it, and this is really important, right? They'll say, oh, I don't need anything, right? I don't need anything. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. All part of that martyring and the tendency to neglect themselves. But when they don't get appreciation, they withdraw and they give their partner the cold shoulder, right? I remember talking to a client and who's in a relationship with an ESFJ and, and he said that she would go days on end, you know, where they were living together and just not talk to him when he had done something that she didn't like or didn't agree with. Um, and instead of talking it through, it would just move into this cold shoulder. They use guilt, right? Instead of direct communication to get their partner to do things for them. Um, they'd be moaning, you know, how much work that they have on their plate. 
again, that, hear that martyring, right? The martyring language that's always used by the ESFJ. Um, they act like a martyr. That's what they do. And they'll say things like, after all I've done for you, this is the thanks I get, or I shouldn't have to ask. You should just know, you know, again, that language, right? But it's the, it's the way in which they move to punishing them and withdrawing from that connection that really lands a powerful punch uh, to whomever they're in a relationship with. So how do you negotiate this one? Well, dealing with your ESFJ partner's tendency to not use direct communication means you have to point out when they're freezing you out or manipulating you to feel guilty. You can't just ignore it. You can't play along with it. You have to point it out. You need to acknowledge their feelings. It sounds like you're upset with me. It seems like, you know, you're feeling like I'm not appreciating you. I want to understand why right? But don't react to their indirect communication and innuendo. Did I do something that you wanted me to do? Or did I not do something you wanted me to do because you sound upset, right? So you're leading them again, much like I said with the other tip was you're leading them through that conversation and that discovery to actually understand what the issue is and not going along with their, their withdrawal from you. You have to let the ESFJ know that you understand and that they're entitled to their feelings and you're encouraging them to express them in a more productive manner, not their judgments, right? And, and that's being really mindful of the dis difference between what is a judgment and what is an actual emotion, because it's the actual emotions you want to get to. I feel hurt. I'm upset because, right? Not, you know, you did something wrong. That's the judgment, right? So that's where we're trying to always move them through. So that concludes today's live episode all around the ESFJ. If you have questions, please post them in the comments. Love to hear from you, whether you're catching this here live with us or you're on the replay. Um, and if you want to know more about the ESFJ relationship style, check out the relationship report or get our relationship toolkit for the ESFJ. It includes in-depth training videos on all things ESFJ. You are going to want to know these juicy details about what drives their behavior, why they behave the way they do, how it is that they need, can develop in order to truly achieve their potential, right? Really leverage those gifts that they bring to us. And all of those resources are available and you can see the link down in the feed there. All of these resources are available through our website, nowfixyourrelationship.com. Don't forget, we still have lots of other personality types to cover as we go through this. We are hosting a LinkedIn episode, LinkedIn Live or Facebook group live episode for each one of the 16 styles. We're partway through the month of February, so we still have quite a few left to go. And also don't forget to check out um, our podcast, which we are launching uh, tomorrow, which is all about how to do romance just in times for Valentine's Day. And if you are an ESFJ experiencing relationship issues, reach out to us and we can help. Thanks again for joining us and being in our audience. We look forward to having you again soon.